They can hear you because in the mighty name of Jesus. in a group. Good morning, church. Let us stand as we go into a word of prayer. as before praise and worship. Let us stand in his presence and let's give God thanks as we honor him. You know, thank God he gave us legs and we can walk. We walk here this morning. We are still alive. We are still breathing. The blood is still running warm in our veins. So let's give him the glory and all the honor this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we bow our heads in the presence of God, Father God, I ask you this morning, Lord God, to show up like never before in this sanctuary, dear God. Hallelujah. As our voices go forth, Lord God, in praise and worship, Lord God, you let the heavenly house, Lord God, join in the name of Jesus and saturate this place with your presence, dear God. Hallelujah. Bless those that are here, Lord God, and those that are on their way, you bring them here safely, Lord God, and those who are not able to make it to the church this morning. Father God, you know us all things, Lord God. You know us all things, Lord Jesus. You bless them and touch them all the same. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, you have your way to small and your precious will be done. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. How many of you this morning know that he's alive?
essence, there is fullness of joy. We don't want what is in his hands, but we want his face. And so that's why we worship, just to be in his presence this morning. Is it because of who you are? Oh, hallelujah. We will lift our voices and say, he is Jehovah Jireh, he is Jehovah Shalom, he is Jehovah. He is Jehovah, whatever you need him to be this morning. He is who he is. And in his presence, you will feel him. You will be restored. You will be delivered. Hallelujah. Just because of who he is. Because of who you are.
Today is the third Sunday in Easter. The service continues with the opening sentence. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us celebrate the feast. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. be with you. Let us pray, O God, whose blessed Son made himself known in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The prayer for the diocese. Almighty and generous God, you are the creator and giver of all that is good. We thank, thank you, you and, and praise, praise you for the beauty of the earth, for our work, our families, our loved ones, and all of the gifts which have been given. 
By your grace, may we show gratitude by sharing what we have received. Always mindful that in serving others, we are serving you. Guided by the same grace, help us to be good stewards who care for your earth and who work to preserve it for future generations. Remain grateful for your constant love, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the presence of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Word of God written in Acts, chapter 4 beginning at the 32nd verse. Reading from the Word of God, written in Acts, chapter 3, beginning at the 12th verse. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the, ho the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is, that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm number four which can be found on page four of your bulletins, which will be read responsively. Answer me when I call, O God, defend of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. A reading from the Word of God, written in First John chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. 
See what the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will has not yet been revealed. What we do not know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have his hope in him purified themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of laziness. Sin is laziness. You know that he is revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or who knows him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning to read out the 36th verse. At that time, Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why does doubt arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, see that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost is not of flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he 
He said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I have spoken to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Lord of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their eyes, their minds, to understand the scripture, and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in the name of all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. This is the gospel of Christ.
Y'all can hear me now. Goodness. Good thing I could remember where I was. When you are in the midst of a storm and there is peace and calm about you, you will not fear anything around you. There has to be someone and something that keeps you at a good, calm place. Jesus now in our lives, while we are anxious about all the murder, all the crime, everything that is going on, Jesus wants to calm our minds and say to replace fear with faith. That our faith life is to now come alive, that you and I must access the faith that is in us. That if we believe in Jesus Christ, now is the time for us to use him in our lives. Don't say, I believe in Jesus. I just go to church. I take communion. I'm a good Anglican. Uh, that's good to say. But are we using our faith life to help us beyond the fears of this world? I was counseling somebody one time, and he said, and, and it became my fair too. I believe he was a drug dealer, but anyway. He says that one of the worst things he fear is waking up with a gun in his face. And I say that to myself too. I don't want that to happen to me either. Are you sleeping, you don't lock up your, you know, lock your doors ten times, put on your alarm, and lock your room door, and lock all the doors. And then you wake up and there's a gun in your face. So I say, wonder why that fella fear that. But anyway, there are some people who fear a whole lot of other things in our lives. Because your, your fear is real. I don't know what you fear, because some of you may be living a real trifling life, and you fear certain things. And you hope it don't happen. But whatever your fear is, Jesus wants to take away those fears and allow you to live a more deeper life from your soul. Your soul is guided by the faith that you have in God. Your mind is somehow controlled by the fears in this life. And there are people who will put you in fear and make you fearful and cause you to live in fear and cause you to be anxious all the time. Christians are not supposed to be anxious and fearful all the time or even at all. Uh, you see me here, I, I, I always try to live a very peaceable life. No matter what type of foolishness happening around church in the diocese or in the country, there's a piece about me that I have to keep because I don't want to come out of character or get outside of the peace of God that is in me. God wants all of us to live in such a way that this peace, the same peace that he says to his disciples, peace be with you, that peace is with all of us. That's point number one. Point number two, after he stepped in the room and gave them his peace, then he had to still work with their unbelief. That they were still unbelieving. They still cannot believe that he really is who he is. In our lives, once God gives us his peace, we'll recognize that we now live what we call an experiential life. 
we meet God through our experiences. When God has met us, we've had an encounter with God. Everything else in life after that should be God showing himself, revealing himself, opening our eyes of faith, helping us to see him more clear. We must be very open and acceptable to what God is doing with us and to us. And so every experience that we go through in life now, whatever situation you find yourself in right now, whoever is in your life right now, and whatever you may find yourself in, God is trying to show himself to you in all those things, in all those areas. And Jesus had to open the eyes of faith to his own disciples. You would say, they're supposed to know all of this, but they didn't. They had to come again once to meet and to touch and to encounter and to experience the risen Savior, just as all of us have to do. But experiencing him is just one part of the story. The second part is for us now to encounter him in such a way that we live his life in our lives. His life become ours, our life become as his. How can we live in this world then where we dispel fear, where we usher in whatever it is God wants us to bring into this world? How can we reveal God to this world? It is said that after that, he opened their eyes to the scriptures. Some people read the scripture and they don't know what they're talking about. Sometimes you read the scripture and say, I don't really understand this. Sometimes I read the scripture and say, there's a contradiction here in the scripture. And sometimes as we look at whatever is being said in the scriptures, we perhaps see things that is hidden from us. You know, if you're not in the faith and God doesn't use your eyes, the thing will be right before you and you will not see it because you're not looking through the right eyes. He caused their eyes of faith to be open. And then he revealed the scripture to them. And he let them know again that all of the things in the Psalms and the prophets, the Old Testament, everything had to be fulfilled. More or less, he's saying to them, I told you when I was alive before that I will die and I will be risen on the third day. And now you don't believe me, but now I'm alive again. And so I have to tell you this again. This thing had to happen. And they then came to believe. And this is very important for all of us. Whatever we believe must be what we live. What we say with our lips, we live with our lives. Whatever we believe in our hearts, that is what we live out. You can't be this good, sanctimonious Christian in your head and in your heart, and all you do is cuss and lie and steal and cheat. In the real life, that's not good. You're living a very contradictory life. You're living a life outside of who you are. And that is not what God wants from us. God wanted his disciples to be immersed in Christ-likeness so that when he left, they could carry on this work. God left us with a very important bit of work that as we know him, our task is to carry him out into this world. And so if people are not believing, if people are wrestling with their faith, it is us who have to make sure that they see more of the face of Jesus. It is us who have to present him to this world. It is us who have to say that I have encountered Jesus let me tell you about this Jesus. Don't leave people struggling or don't leave them in their ignorance because nowadays we tend to be very selfish. We say, they're stupid, I ain't gonna deal with them. He looked like he got problems, I ain't gonna mess with him. She got issues, I don't want her around me. And we find all kinds of ways to stay by ourselves. And that good Jesus that is in you is never felt and seen to the very people that God might have put in your way. You get that stupid boyfriend so you can teach him about God. You get that man who you think ain't right in the head, so you could teach him about God. You get that giddy girlfriend because she needs to meet and know who God is. And you get that wayward wife because you have to show her exactly what God is all about. Them children you have, the people at work, your boss even. All these people in your life. You can sit right down now in church while I'm preaching because I know you all think about other things. Sit right down in church now and say, who in my life now God want me to touch? and to change. God put some people in your life so that you can touch and change them. If they disbelieve like the disciples, it's okay. Because if God wanted to, God could just knock them down and put himself in them. Remember Saul was going to kill people, kill the Christians, persecute them. And God just knocked them down and put himself in that man 
And he turned right around. Some people in this life, in this country now, say, we don't believe in Jesus. Father, that thing you're all talking about, I make no sense anyhow. But you all could believe in that. If God wants to, he show himself to them in powerful ways. They ain't got no choice. And he turned them right around. They become great preachers, you know, probably open church. And you'll say, I can't believe this, that fella who say he'll never be a Christian. But God gives us all the opportunity to do his work. So today, the disciples were terrified. They were afraid of this man, Jesus, whom they loved and walked amongst. And you must know that the world itself will grapple with faith. We have grappled with our faith. I pray that we don't grapple with our faith so much that we turn away from it, but we turn to it. May we today then, as Easter people, continue to live lives where God is seen and felt where people may know that Jesus is alive and risen because he lives in you and he lives in me. This is my hope and my prayer for all of us this day. In his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
In the sessions are taken from Form C, page 108, in your prayer books. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We say together, O Lord, Lord our God, God accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion on us and on all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O Lord, God. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The act of penitence. If we say we have no sin, we have deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just, he will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left under. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please stand. We are the body of Christ, by the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. My friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Father, we offer you these gifts that you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. With them, we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen.
blessing everywhere to give you thanks. Father Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. E on page 142. Sovereign Lord and Father, to be praise, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night, that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. So therefore, Father... According to the command of your dearly beloved Son, remember, we proclaim his resurrection. We obey this common and glory. And we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood. The Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Baptist, St. Joseph, St. Barnabas, and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ our Lord, with him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor. Savior has taught us, so we pray.
break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Souls with peace and be satisfied. Add songs of praise to Him.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray the post-communion prayer. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This today is the third Sunday after Easter, and we believe that God is good. All the time. And all the time. All Come on, people. God is good. All the time. And all the time. All is good. If you are visiting with us this morning, please stand so we can greet you with a warm St. Barnabas welcome. You're all family, so give yourselves a round of applause. If you are celebrating a birthday or anniversary or anything special this week, please stand so we can celebrate with you. say congratulations to the ACW who celebrate their 60th diamond anniversary this evening at 5 p.m. and you all are welcome to attend. I don't see LaQuay Rose here today but give her a round of applause in her absence. The DYD featured her because she's on the Dean's list from her school. If you look in the bulletin on page 10 you'll see it so please give her a round of applause. Please remember the sick and the shutting of our parish. Please remember the family of, of Thomas Watson, who will be laid to rest on the 18th of April. Rosalind Lubin Martin will be laid to rest on the 20th. Please remember those family in prayer. The Anglican Casio is asking for your support. Saturday the 20th, there, there is a walkathon, and they are asking you to support them. They will leave St. Matthew's Church at 6 a.m. in the morning. Please support them. They also have South Turkey, pig feet, and chicken. The cost is $15. What is the verdict? St. Barnabas Sunday School presents What is the Verdict? An Easter play which will be held next Sunday, the 21st at 6 p.m., right here at the parish. Now, people, I need you to support the Sunday school. The children was practicing and practicing and practicing, so I'm going to ask you to bring a friend with you that evening. There is a small donation, $10 for adults and $5 for children at the door. I will be on the porch with the tickets. Please, these are our youths of the church, and we have to support them. Father Burton is in Long Island, so I'm going to ask you to please pray for him. 
I'm going to ask you to take your bulletins away with you and remember the events in the, light, in the life of the church. And like I always say, people, if we are a people to pray, there is a God to answer. Amen? Please come for your birthday blessing. And people, another thing I always say, please don't sit in the seat and suffer by yourself. If you need prayers, Father Bain is here to pray for you. Please come to the altar. And anniversaries. While we're in prayerful mode, don't forget Vanessa, Mr. Williams and family. Vanessa has had a successful surgery and she's hey. recovered. We continue to pray for her recovery. It may be a long road ahead, but we pray that God, who is the healer, will continue to keep Amen. his hands, keep his hands upon her. All right. Birthday? Birthday? Anniversary, anyone? All birthdays. Anniversary, Mr. Jeff. Okay. So you stand right there by yourself a little bit. We'll get the birthday people out of the way first. All right. Ah, yes. This is awesome. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just pray this. Just pray. Bless the Lord Christ Jesus. We pray this your child, and as she comes now to celebrate her birthday, as they come to say thank you for another year, another milestone. You have indeed been a good and a faithful God to them. Keep your hands upon them in mighty ways. And as they increase in years, they increase in your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding. Allow them, O oh Lord, to feel your grace, your love, your Holy Spirit. Pray that no weapon form against them prosper. May they be children of you now, children of the light, continue to dispel darkness from around them. We pray that fear or nothing will hold them back, but their faith may cause them to be propelled in this life. Place them now in your care. We ask for your many gifts of love, of joy, of peace, of kindness, all the gifts that you promised to your faithful ones. Bless these, your children, with it. Let them be a blessing to everyone that they meet on life's road. May you continue to pour into them that their cup will pour over. And may they always be blessed. Prosper them in their ways, O Lord Christ Jesus, and grant them success. And we pray that one day they may see you face to face in your heavenly kingdom. And now may your blessing, now of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be upon them and remain with them now and always. Amen. Happy birthday, daughter Alrique, is it? Very good. All right, happy birthday. Uh, just press. Okay, hold on, Mr. Pepper, one moment. Just for family. Anything in particular? In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Christ Jesus, keep your hand on this family. Continue to minister to them. Allow you, O oh Lord Christ, to work powerfully in their lives. Remove anything that is not of you from this family. And we pray that you release whatever is not of you from this family. We ask, O oh Lord, that no weapon form against this family prosper, that you keep them in your love, in your will, and in your way. These are your children, O oh Lord, and this is your family. We pray that you nurture them with your Holy Spirit, with your grace, and with your mercy. And allow them to know, Lord, that you are in them. Greater is he that is in them than he that is in this world. And so fight for each and every one of them. Continue, Lord, to undergird them with your power, with your strength. And let them move forward in this life, not hampered by fear or anything. That they may know that they are more than conquerors because of you. I place them now in your care. And I pray, Lord, that you grant them, O oh Lord, your many blessings. The blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless and keep you. All right. Now to Mr. and Mrs. Bethel. How many uh, years, if you don't mind saying? 29 years. Do you want to face him, face her? Remember the first day that you met, that you laid eyes on her? First day you laid eyes on him? You said, that's my man right there. <laughs> All right. So just think about that and, uh, as we pray. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Christ Jesus, we give you thanks for this couple. They thank you for their lives. They thank you for 39 years of marital bliss. They thank you, Lord, that in your grace and your love and your mercy, you brought them, out of, brought them together of all persons in this world. That indeed was your gracious and mighty doing. May you work in this marriage Lord, now, Lord Christ Jesus. Join them together as one as marriage is intended. Let your love continue to flow in their hearts for each other. But let them love you above all. May you indeed be in this marriage, in them joint and severally. Wrap yourself around them and tie them in a covenant. And let them know that you promise you will not leave them or forsake them or put more on them in this marriage that they can bear. 
So fight for them and bless their children and their children's children, their home, their family, and continue with them all their days that they may live in long life and health and strength, that they may indeed cause, O Lord Christ Jesus, you to increase and they to decrease, and that as they grow older together, they may live in joy and peace and harmony. May your blessing be upon this marriage. Now and always we pray. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Congratulations and happy anniversary. Amen. I know some of you wanted to see them kiss, but that's not your, not your, uh, not for you to see today. Not for you to see today. Very good. So continue to pray for those who are sick. Remember uh, Joanne Hamilton as well, our youth director. Her mother, her mother Paula Brown, is very ill, very, very ill. And so pray for her and her children, her daughters, and that family, and for Paula as she continues to struggle on. Pray for all who are sick as well that we know. A lot of people are going through a lot of stuff. And if you're going through a lot of stuff, uh, try not to despair or become hopeless. But that's why Jesus died. So we can have hope and faith that there will be a better day and a better time for all of us. All right? Keep praying. God bless and do have a good day. Lord Christ Jesus, continue to keep us safe in your hands.
And may you, Lord, continue to, light up, to guide us throughout our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.